Hey everyone, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're gonna to be doing some tips, tricks, hacks around the shop, some processes that I do, in hopes that I give you some cool ideas for your own place. I'm sure there'll be some good stuff for people who are beginner intermediate, but I know at least one of the things I do, no one else does. And so hopefully there's at least a gem in there for you salty wood dogs that know everything already. Uh, I have no sponsor in today's video, so it's all Justin, baby today on Bittner Built. The Craig Jig and Pocket Holes. If you're a woodworker, you've used it. And most likely you've probably had this collar that sets the depth of your drill bit move on you when you're using it. And there's nothing more infuriating to me when I go to screw something in and realize that I drilled something way too deep and now it's ruined whatever piece of wood that I'm working on and I have to start over again. So after this happening several times, I said, there's gotta be a better way. And so what I did was I went and I bought three of the drill bits and then I soldered them into position. Now welding would obviously be a lot better, I'm sure. However, I don't know how to weld. So if you know how to weld, awesome. If anybody wants to teach me, let me know. But um, for my application, I went ahead and put a ton of solder on there. Just that way they're locked into place. They're never gonna move. And I know that when I use this bit, it's not gonna ruin my project. Number two is my mobile accessory cart. I have a rule in my shop. If it's a large tool, it gets its own structure that it lives in. If it's a medium sized tool, I make it modular to fit in with this system so that I can use the tool right here when I need to, and I can go hide it away somewhere else when it's not in use. This I kind of highlighted during my shop tour, if you saw that video, but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth into it this time. On all my medium sized tools, I mounted to a board that I put a strip of three quarter inch wood on the back. It fits into this hole right here so that I can drop it in. Once it's in that hole, it doesn't move at all. On all of these boards, I take a spare plastic container that, you know, I got screws or something in, and I permanently mount it to the board. And then inside that container, I keep all of the spare parts and even the tools that I use to adjust that tool inside here. That way, this always travels everywhere with this. I also design each board differently for each use case. On this one, I made two little trough cubbies. That way I can keep my additional Craig jigs out and I can keep all of my bits here. And even if I'm moving around, they stay put. And of course, if I don't have a tool on top, this is another mobile workstation that I can move anywhere in the shop if I need another surface to work on. This next thing is a lot more common, but I wanted to share it out there. Uh, it's called a small parts mat. Uh, now, if I'm doing something where I'm disassembling something, I like being able to use my uh, Litz um, magnifying glass. But this mat keeps little screws from falling off your work table. They get caught in the ribs right here. And then there's also these bays on the side where you can put your screws in order as you disassemble something. That way you know what order to put them back in. I've had this one since 2008. This one's for disassembling paintball guns. Um, there's really nice ones out there for $10 on Amazon. So for such a small affordable thing, it's a nice extra to have in your shop uh, that I use all the time. Here's a second mat that I use as well. This one is actually for repairing firearms. And the cool thing about this mat is it repels oils and liquids. I don't know what they have it treated with, but it's phenomenal. So if you're working on a gas powered item in your shop, like a chainsaw, for example, chainsaws just spew oil everywhere. And I don't wanna get that on my assembly table. The amazing thing about this neoprene mat is that when you pour oil or liquids on it, they just bead up and you can even move it around where it's kind of like being on the space station and you see the globules of liquid floating through the air, which is really cool. And then you can just take a paper towel and wipe it up and the mat itself doesn't get wet. So if you have something that is oily or some sort of liquid, this is a really cool product to keep your nice worktop safe when you're working on that product here. For number four, we go to the drill bit drawer. And as you can see, I have all my bits out here and I have them organized really well. And I don't know about you, but can you read this little itty bitty number, especially once you've used it heavily and it's all scratched up? I cannot. So the way that I keep track of where a bit goes is when I come over here and I take a bit out, I then put this clip where the bit came from. 
it's really stupid and really easy, but it's so simple it works. Uh, that way when I come back, I don't have to think about it. I just take the clip away and throw my bit where it goes. When we're working over at the table saw, we always use a push stick if our fingers are gonna get really close to the table saw. But over at the miter saw, we do a lot of dangerous stuff getting our fingers really close. And after I had a really bad kickback uh, on my miter saw where my finger turned completely black and blue, it was super painful. Luckily I didn't cut myself, I got all my fingers. Um, I went and I got this. This is called the $10 million stick. It's for holding your wood pieces when you're using the miter saw. Uh, it has three points of contact, which is pretty good. So it's pushing down here as well as here on the wood and behind it. I use this especially when I'm using a stop block close to the blade. I don't want to get my finger really close in there holding it. And so, you know, common sense. Put something there to hold your, your wood instead of your finger. In the comments, I had some people ask me about how I store my tools that have a cable. And the honest answer is no way is good. Cables are horrible. But uh, I'll share a couple ways that I do it. With my track saw here, I have a cubby system under its cleat. That way I can just shove it in there. Uh, I also keep some of the spare parts for this unit in the cubby. For my biscuit joiner, I use more of a two peg method to wind the cable. This takes a couple seconds longer than just shoving it into a cavity, but in some ways it looks nicer. And of course, make sure you have things for your accessories on here too. We are back at the drill bit station. I have a bolt that came with something and it's a random bolt. And whatever the reason, I need to drill a hole for it to go into something. So how do I figure that out? Uh, do we do the try and line it up method and you know, wean it out, or do we go grab some calipers and measure it? Or we can just use this guy. It's super cheap. I think I got this one from Home Depot, but they sell them all over the place. And it's just a sizing guide. So I'm able to just take this bolt real quick, check it out. Okay, it's an M6, awesome. Same thing with my drill bits right here. I could say, oh, that's good. Maybe I want a hole that's just a little bit bigger than that bolt. So, all right, we found the drill bit that we're gonna use. Just having this in with my drill bits makes it easy if I have a random item that I need to try and pick the drill bit size for. I came up with this idea when I was doing an epoxy pour. When you're pouring epoxy into something, it's incredibly important that it's perfectly flat and level. If it's even minutely off level at a slant, even where you can't visually see it, the epoxy over the course of a few hours will leave your entire project and go all over your wonderful counter or other surface that you have it on. Um, or at least what it's gonna do is it's gonna go this way and then the other side is gonna be left as a valley where the epoxy is no longer there and that could ruin your project. So epoxy is expensive, make sure your product is completely level. Now, what do people do to make sure that it's completely level? Some people shim it, shims can move, uh, some people have an entire table that's leveled. That's awesome, I don't have space for that. Uh, and then other people make an independent jig. So you take a big you know, piece of plywood, you put adjustable feet on them, and then you, know, you could even maybe permanently mount levels to them so that when you put your epoxy job on there, you can tweak it and get it just right. I don't want another big jig in my shop. That's like, I don't want it. I don't want a stupid board that I have to take up a huge amount of space. So I came up with this solution. First off, the humble cookie. Um, this one's a Rockler one, but uh, any cookie that has a screw mount will do. And then what you do is you take this fun attachment and screw it on. They sell these at Rockler for this particular one. What that's for is so I can put it in one of my dog holes and it's not gonna move. But then I add another cookie to the other side. So now I have a fun little platform. That's not the beauty of it though. If I twist the platform, it has become an independent adjustable foot. So if I use four of these with my project under each one of the corners, I can then put my level on it and say, oh, I'm at a level over here and just twist this cookie, unscrewing it a little bit, which will raise it up. And then I become perfectly level. It supports hundreds of pounds. It's not going to have a piece of it shift out like if I were to put shims under there. There's a possibility that the shims let go and move. 
Uh, and then also, I'm not constrained by size. So I actually did this on a countertop pour that I recently did. Uh, it was incredibly heavy. And so I actually put these in Ziploc bags because I knew there was gonna be epoxy spillover and I didn't want epoxy all over these. But I put them in Ziploc bags, got it perfectly level, and it turned out great. The other thing too is these are super small. So when I'm done, I'm not hanging that big jig up on the wall. I'm just taking apart my cookies, putting them in my little cubbies on my workbench right here. And when I need them, I can take them out and quickly assemble them and use them in this fashion again. There's a lot of other uses for it too outside of epoxy, but um, epoxy for me is my number one use for it. And it works really, really well. I hope even if you're an experienced guy, you caught a good couple gems out of there that you might use yourself. Um, if you have some really cool tips and you want to share them, throw them down in the comments. Maybe we can do a video together. Speaking of which, if you have a wood shop, a mechanic shop, some cool type of space and you're in the New York, New Jersey area, I'm going to be doing a series on this channel where I go and visit other people's shops. We can do a little shop talk, show off the cool things that you have and the way you organize things because people are really interested in that and you know we want to share that out. So hit me up in the comments. I also have my email down there. So if you'd like for me to come out and we can hang out for an hour or two, let me know. In the meantime, stay safe in the shop and I will see you in the next video.